Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to some more Let's Play The Occult Chronicles. It's been two months since I recorded the game. It's actually just going to be like probably a week since the last video was uploaded to this playlist, though. I'm all caught up. The last video went up, and I think we have enough days left in October to do one more run for the end of the game. One more attempt at victory for us. So, let's make ourselves an investigator and get in there and see how well we do. So, as always, I like the story speed being slow. We'll play on difficulty agent. I find I have the most fun playing that. And we'll play Reaper mode because it's fun watching me get punched in the face sometimes. And listening to me complain for endless hours about how the cards hate me. Next, we're going to play the pact again. Because, why not? I have made some alterations to the pact, or at least I believe I did, back in August or early September. Where I weakened at least the random encounters that you fight with the imps. I didn't add magical means, I think, of dealing with them, but I believe I did lower their, the numbers you needed to win the against them in physical combat. So, we're gonna see how well that plays out for us. Let's first read the mission description, and then we'll make our investigator. So, the pact. Your old friend August Durleth retired from Z Branch many years ago, and you hadn't heard from him since. You assumed he'd been engrossed in his bibliophilic pursuits, and your assignments had you jumping from one hotspot to the next. Then the letter arrived in the mail. Durlith implored you to come and visit him at his family estate that he had inherited as the sole surviving heir. The tone of the letter was disturbing. He spoke of a great discovery that he wanted to share with you. Your suspicions deepened when you arrived at the front gate. The place looked like it hadn't been occupied for years. You determined that you would enter and find your friend. Okay, so I think <laughs> I think we'll choose this as our portrait. What's a good name for this guy? Let's try Dennis Wright. Sounds like a good two ends in Dennis, Tim. I think <laughs> I'm not Dennis. I don't know anyone named Dennis. I certainly hope this is the right way to spell Dennis. We're going with it. All right, next a background. So when we last left off, I tried clicking the Circus Performer, which I believed was the worst starting <laughs> um, background you could possibly pick. And I'm dead certain I'm correct on that. We're not going to be picking this again. I think it makes sense for us to pick someone a little experience with the odd, given the background that we have. And we haven't played a, a physical character yet, while well, in the past few videos that we've recorded. One second. No one's at the door. All right, so I'm thinking will we either take a mercenary or a soldier? Let's look at this. What do we gain here? We gain a service pistol or a shotgun. So we're starting with a random ranged weapon. Heroic feet, two combat edges, a bonus swords, a random air talisman, and plus one swords. Or you can get a melee weapon or a service pistol. So either a ranged or a melee. Heroic feats, one combat edge, an earth an air talisman, and plus one starting health. So this is arguably worse than the soldier. It could be just as good if you end up with a melee weapon. Melee weapons almost always give you plus one swords. But otherwise, stat-wise, I'd rather have the soldier for the plus one swords. That said, we'll attempt to make this a little tough for ourselves. So, let's go ahead and try a mercenary. Once a member of that old and honorable guild of soldiers of fortune, you fought for petty dictators and bloodthirsty warlords from the Belgian Congo to Peking. Being the sole survivor of your last outfit that was swallowed up in the, I can't pronounce this, Rabal Kali, you thought the odd might offer better odds. You were wrong. So we'll start with the bonus swords. A combat edge that'll make it easier for us to engage in physical combat of some sort, or maybe use a pistol or, or a melee weapon. We get two random combat heroic feats, that'd be making it easier for us to use pistols or melee weapons. We start with the pistol or melee weapon, we get an air talisman, and a little bit of life. Next, we get a bone. We're going to start with a bone of swords. I'm thinking we'll choose probably... We'll probably end up picking something that increases our cups and something that increases our pentacles as we play. Maybe? So I think we'll pick a bone of, well... Yeah, we'll take a bone of wands. Next, 
By now you know I like taking two and everything. We've already seen how much difficult time we, we have if we don't take two and everything. And I'm thinking we either want probably swords or cups. Or we could take one. Oh, it's tricky. Swords and cups will help us with the physical combat we'll be in. Wands of pentacles will help us with the horror checks. We're lucky to be able to improve our swords and cups early on, given our starting background. I don't think I've ever picked a mercenary before. Soldier's almost always better. Since I'm not likely to choose something that will improve my wands, I'm probably going to end up picking a um, talisman specialist. That will be pentacles, I think. We'll make it slightly easier for us to do horror checks. How's that? We'll have to rely on getting lucky for our first starting combats, or hope we have a melee weapon and not a ranged weapon. For our starting edge... I'm thinking I want lightning reflexes. It's nice to lower the difficulty of traps, that means less cards drawn, which means less wounds or impairments taken in the early portions of the game, which is really useful. Then again, we could take... Well, I'd much... Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to get... I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to start with a melee weapon or a pistol. So I don't know if I should choose one of those. Yeah, I think we're going to end up taking lightning reflexes. Let's pick that. This will come in useful later on in the game as well. As you know, when we reach the basement levels, we will want to be able to avoid traps or make them easier for us to do. Alright! Let's start the game. I've decided to upload the soundtrack as well. I'm going to be using this video, I think, and then splicing in... I'll be removing my voice from it, and the sound, and then putting the soundtrack in instead as a heads up. We start with a melee weapon! That's wonderful! As you can see, this gives us plus one swords, which is very nice. I really like getting a melee weapon to start. So, what's the difference between a melee weapon and ranged? Melee weapons give you plus one to your sword stat, almost always. I can't think of... They might maybe give you something for your cups, but I think they almost always give you plus one swords. A gun gives you another combat option, which can make it significantly easier for you to defeat certain types of creatures. By far and large, though, I always prefer the plus one swords and the combat option. But it can be still very useful. We started with a storm as our talisman. You can see the appear chance and the release chance there. That's actually... A, that's decent. A 45 appear with only a 4% release. I like that. Here's our file. What do we start for edges? Up close and personal. Gain X additional uses of any of all knife weapons in any combat challenges where X is the level of the edge. Nice! We actually got a, a edge that actually helps our trench knife. And what does this do? Roll one bone and bump the card value up on a random non-face card in hand plus X, where X is the number of swords rolled. Okay, that could be useful. And that's all we got. All right then, very quickly everyone, you know by now, I like going exiting back to the main menu really quick. Uh, this is Dennis. Let me get right back into it again. This way I don't have to recreate the character. I actually like what the game selected for our starting, um, one of our starting edges. Plus our weapon, that's very nice. Alright. So, what are we doing? If we go north, we're likely to fall into this pit, end up in the basement, and our adventure will probably end in a few turns. We will start by going out to the left. Remember, by the way, everyone, in case I haven't mentioned it in a bit, this is a modded version of Occult Chronicles. I have generally made the game... I've given you more options, and I have not uploaded this mod anywhere. A part of me doesn't really want to, because I still have a few glitches. Um... But if you picked up the game, this is not quite what you'll get, because I have added lots of options for dealing with certain creatures and encounters that are not in the normal game. Just a heads up. The Boxing Ring. There, as you know by now, perhaps, there is a long quest series, well... There's a series of ghosts that we can encounter in here, and then we can engage in psychic combat with them. Until my pentacles is four, I'd rather not do it. We, we need a decent amount of wands and pentacles to succeed at that challenge. I'm going to leave the boxing ring untouched 
until later on in the game. We'll come back for that. I don't think we can win the challenge, given our current wands and pentacles numbers. Oh! Increase swords, increase cups. I like that, but three for each. A crafts room. What were they making in here? Looks like a... Oh, I forget what that's called. That looks like a threading? A sp that's not a spool. I actually have I had one of those. A pile of junk. You notice a small pile of junk clearing up a section of the floor. Upon closer examination, you see an assortment of typical cast-off items. Broken pieces of this and that. We don't have a good chance to succeed at this at the moment, so we're just going to pass by it. You can get some decent items for this, but I want more draw. You also only get one attempt at it. If you fail your search, you ain't doing it again. And since I'm playing Reaper mode, I can't reload the game to cheat. So we're not going to touch it. We'll come back. There will be a nurse fight in here. Possibly. This also could have the brain canisters in it and the Talazrati uh, invader. We're here, so we'll take a peek at this. Or could have nothing in it. That's interesting. So Dennis is here looking for his friend. He's walked into the place. The outside wasn't in good condition. He's immediately seen a giant hole in the floor and knows this place must... And coffins down there. And knows this place must not be lived in for a while. A billiards room. So this is a billiards table. What do we have around this? Telesarati generator. You're confronted with a strange machine that seems to hiss and crackle with otherworldly energy. There is something very odd going on here. You sense that it might be dangerous to get too close. The technology reminds you vaguely of the photographs that you saw that were taken during the first interdimensional war against the Talazrati. This might be a portal generator, and if so, that is bad news. You remember what happened at Tunguska in the, in the 1908? In the 1908. You're happy to put some distance between yourself and its strange energy, and you're pretty sure it won't be pursuing you. You just need to watch out for any Telesrati that might be nearby. Yeah, there could be a brain bot. Or Telesrati in the room. A haunted painting of a coward. You notice an odd painting hanging on the wall. It is a portrait of a man dressed in 19th century clothing who appears to be completely petrified with fear. He holds a dueling pistol in both hands, and a group of undertakers in the background seem to be digging a grave. Suddenly, the portrait seems to animate and come to life. The coward looks up at you with an imploring expression as if he was seeking your help. You could swear that you can hear the gravediggers laughing. You stare at the man in the painting and his fear seems contagious. You need to fight to keep your sanity. Oh, for four cards and two pages? I'll take it. Let's hope we get lucky up here. That will make us only draw one card for failure, so I'm glad with that so far. You can have my ace, Mr. Knight. Nice. We win. Your mind is strong. In a playful way, you exclaim boo to the ghost. And he starts to shake and sob uncontrollably. The coward in the portrait seems to be actually shivering. He seems to be fumbling with his dueling pistol. And you fear he will discharge it accidentally. There is obviously a spirit trapped in the painting by some sorceress curse. Now, we need a high pentacles in order to in order to actually communicate with the ghost. Our best chance, I think, is to flee. Again, our wands and pentacles are too low, so we can't use sorcery. Well, we can, but we're not likely to win. We could duel the ghost, but we're not likely to win that either. We have the best... Oh, we actually have an equal chance of dest to destroy the painting or duel the ghost. But I think we'll just try to flee it. You can't believe you're even thinking this, but running from this cowardly creature might be the best course of action. It still is a supernatural apparition, so you'll need to conquer your own fears first. It wasn't that difficult after all. You feel a little sheepish about it, but nobody else has to know. We can thankfully walk around it. I will check that spot really quick. We might, oh, well, again, later on, we'll, 
one of our first backgrounds will probably... Well, yeah. We'll probably take a Pentacles background first. Talisman expert, I would imagine. And then we'll go for... um. Maybe an investigator, something that can improve our, our wands a bit, and cups, I'm, I'm thinking. Assuming that we get, get that far. Fire imps! You smell brimstone and immediately recognize it for what it is. You've encountered fire imps before. They are the servants of dark powers and demon princes, and they are nasty little creatures. You spot... That should be capitalized. You spot them glowing brightly and moving directly towards you. They seem to be able to conjure fire out of thin air. You try and block out the crack cackling laughter and focus on the danger at hand. I think I lowered the horror check. I think this used to be like an 11 or higher. So now it's a lot more manageable for us. Do I play the king and win? Or do I hold on to the king and hope to take something better than a 6? I think we'll play the king. My thoughts being that we also had a 10. And the 10 can take all the number cards. So. Oh darn it. But I did make a mistake. Should have held on to the king. Well, we still win by three points. Your mind is strong. You've dispatched dozens of creatures like these before. You remember that exorcism you helped out in with helped out with in Georgetown all those years ago. The imps blow bell bellow? Bellow smoke from their ears and nostrils and hurl flaming projectiles at you. The good news is that you can kill them. They're just tough little buggers. I think this used to be a 14. Looks like I lowered it to an 11. That's still way too high for the low di for this difficulty. Okay, I'm going to have to lower this number by like three more points. You need to re really wade into them to get them to break. They serve a master and almost always fight to extinction. We have a good hand for this, assuming we can get some pentacles up here. We win just barely. You soon have created piles of imp bodies all over the floor. They fight until the last one dies in the fit of coughing laughter. Everyone, I'm going to be right back. I'm actually going to lower that number right now. I see what happened. Um, so when you encounter the mission m monsters, so for example, the little hunchback in the Elder, or the cultists for the key and gate, there are two versions of all those random monsters that you can encounter. One of them uh, should be easier than the other, and is in the Key and Gate and the Elder. But the packed encounters are exactly the same. It's like it's like Vic forgot to make one of them easier than the other. So we're actually encountering the you've actually leveled a bit version of the imps this early, and not the, it's the first floor, you shouldn't be annihilated by this version of the imps instead. I've lowered the fire imps from an 11 to an 8, which should make them doable, if a little bit tricky, but I think we can do that significantly easier than an 11 as the score. And the normal imps, were already I already weakened them, but I didn't weaken the fire imps a bit. Reanimated Skeleton. It seems impossible, but a human skeleton steps in front of you from out of the gloom. It hisses at you, and you smell the breath of death. Some dark necromancy must animate this long-dead creature. You can't even understand how the bones could be held together. It is terrifying. Oof, two aces in our hand. We do have a king, though, but we'll need a swords to show up. And it doesn't. Your mind is weak. You struggle to maintain your sanity. The existence of a reanimated skeleton is hard to fathom, no matter how many times you have seen one. I guess we haven't seen one ever. Just in, um... Jason and the Organauts. I remember that movie well. The skeleton's there, you hacked off their head, and, uh, it would just... Well, actually, was that the right? Yeah, you, you would kill the skeletons, and they come right back again. You wonder if a curse or necromancer of some skill has some of the spirit to animate this bag of bones. Was it sent after you? Remember from your briefings that its decayed appearance can be deceptive and prepare yourself. You will either need to fight or flee. What are our chances? Attacking it? You've got a bone to pick with this skeleton. If you hack it pe if you hack it pieces, you suspect it won't be getting back up. That's missing uh, something. Wow, we actually have a much easier chance to use magic. 
Why is a skeleton a 9 difficulty? That seems really high. We'll blast it with a spell. It's a physical creature, so you're sure you can reduce it to ashes with the right spell. The trick is doing so without joining its current dead condition. This should probably be one tougher. So I added this as an option when fighting the skeleton. Normally you would only be able to do this. But this is significantly easier than this. This might be a 9, because we have a 3 in swords, so the game might be making it more difficult for us. That said... We'll do this oof instead. That is a miserable hand. We thankfully will reduce the damage we take, but... You're unable to bring the proper spell to your mind. Its grin is unnerving, and you could swear you hear it laughing as its weapon slashes at you. Ouch. Um... Slightly easier. We'll do this again. Hello, Queen of Cups. We have a King of Cups. That lets us annihilate you. Wow, King of Swords, though, takes away our page. You narrowly avoid a slash as you finish your incantation. It never has a chance to take a second as the spine snaps and it crumples to the ground. The bones turn to dust before your eyes. To experience is very nice at this low level. A ranged edge. We don't even have a ranged weapon. I think we want cups next, and then swords again, and then we'll add a skill card. Or maybe we'll add cups and then a skill card, but I want a three in cups as well. The Haunted Pipe Organ. You see before you a large and ornate Baroque pipe organ. The bench before it sits empty. Suddenly, your ears are filled with the haunting sounds of music resounding from the organ's pipes. The melody is terrifying, and you watch astonished as a ghostly vapor encompasses the magical instrument. Musical instrument, actually. You struggle to keep your fear in check. Actually, it's probably a magical musical instrument. It's probably both. Resist the horror of the music. The haunting music threatens to drown you in a sea of melancholy. I can't pronounce that. Melancholy? Yeah, there you go. And despair. Something supernatural possesses this musical instrument, and you must resist its effort to chip away at your sanity. The King of Swords will totally use it. it. Might be a waste, but I don't want to lose sanity this early in the game. And it was a waste. You have kept your sanity. You shield yourself by humming a simple show tune that's bothered you for the last few months. You chuckle ironically at the fact that such a bad jingle that annoyed you for so long actually came in handy. I do wish it flipped them all over to show me what was where. That'd be a nice game to play with you guys. Alas, there's no way for me to mod that in. You stand before the pipe organ and struggle to make sense of what you have just seen and more importantly heard. There is a powerful spirit bound to this musical instrument via some nefarious sorcery or curse. You can feel the anger and rage building within it. You suspect it is getting ready to assault your mind again. We can attack it without a good chance of succeeding. You have a, I'd argue, a, uh, an equal chance to dispel it. A slightly better chance to engage it in a psychic duel. We could try communicating with it, but we're not likely to succeed, given our low wands. Still, this would give us a quest. We'll make one attempt at it. You seek to use your talents as a medium to contact the spirit inhabiting the pipe organ and divine what it is that binds it to this world. If you can figure out what is holding it from returning to the spirit world, you might be able to free it. That was wonderful. As you know, getting quests in the early game is very important. And it's going to be difficult for us, because we've only got three wands and two pentacles. Psychic characters are better able to get the starting quests. In the base game, physical characters are better able to deal with the random encounters. Your mind establishes contact with the spirit. You recognize immediately that you are dealing with is the agony of hundreds of tormented souls. No, not souls, but a psychic pain that still resonates in the pipe organ. They want something of you. You think that you finally understand what you are confronting. 
The disembodied death agony of hundreds of souls has accumulated in the pipe organ, either by design or accident. The negative energy manifests itself as a single entity, a self-aware super-spirit of anger and rage. You suspect that you are witnessing the end result of many a black mass and vile sacrifice. It wants your help to free itself and seek retribution. Many years ago it was sabotaged by the will of its creator. It needs you to seek out its missing parts in a sheet of music that can release its trapped rage. First, find the grandfather clock where the missing parts are hidden. Then, confront and destroy the evil organ master ghost that weaved the binding spell and hid the missing parts. It possesses a sheet of music that when played will break the curse. A falling chandelier. You hear the sound of straining metal above you and then a, a, a sudden crack. You look up to see a massive glass and metal chandelier falling directly towards us. Oof, this is tricky. They're both just about equal. I generally prefer more draw than tricks, though. Without hesitation, you throw yourself into a crouching roll and tumble away from the falling chandelier. Oh. It's not a god-awful hand, but we're gonna need a cups or a wands for this. That's good. We'll play the 10. That will reduce the damage we take. And thank God, we don't will avoid this trap. You spring forward and come up on one knee, knee free from the wreckage. That was a close one. Indeed it was. Uh, we'll stick to this hallway at the moment. Oh, the zombie hallway. This is a good way to farm if you want some experience. Let's see what's in at least... Oh, that one door. Wow. You saw them lying on the floor, but you obviously didn't connect the dots. You started down the hall, giving the burlap sacks a wide berth. You slipped past one large bag and then stopped in your tracks when you heard the ripping sound of cloth being torn by some sharp instrument. You turn and to face the sound and witness a decaying corpse rising up out of the remnants of the bag. The sharp instruments are razor-like claws. Your ritual thinking has put you in a tough position. Body sacks lying on the floor? What did you think was going to happen? Your mind is weak. You told to maintain your sight. That was dumb. I should have flipped over cars. We could have gotten an ace and gotten very lucky. Oh, we might have gotten very lucky and gotten an ace, but it didn't matter. We didn't take any sanity loss. The undead creature lumbers towards you. You know exactly what it intends. At this point, it's fight or flee. You had better hope the rest of those, those bags don't start moving. So we actually have a better chance to use sorcery. The game, I think, is making this tougher for us because we have a three in wands and a three in swords. So the game has decided to, to raise the difficulty of those. So we'll just use magic. It's, a bit, it's very weird, but we'll do that. Zombies are pretty much decayed people, so the wither spell should be able to accelerate the process, reducing it to dust. I haven't tried it on zombies very often. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Hmm. We'll go this way. Well, we found out where the pianist is. Goes to the organ master. You are suddenly confronted by a translucent figure. It seems dressed in the attire of a previous era, perhaps the late 17th century. Your first impression is that it's not a hostile spirit. It seems to be considering you and taking your measure. Despite the non-threatening approach of the ghost, your confrontation with the supernatural is still very disturbing to your peace of mind. You will need to strengthen your mental defenses a little more. This shouldn't be so tough for an experienced agent. Yeah, Vic, but you made the game the way it is, so what do you want me to do? You recognize the ghost's attire as that of a chapel or organ master. 
Your odd training tells you that it's a class 4 free-roaming entity. It has retained its identity from its previous life and seems fully self-aware. The ghost gestures gently as if it would like to allay your fears and make contact with you. We'll communicate with it. You set about making contact through your skills as a medium. You have been taught the trance and meditation techniques at the Odd Academy. Yes! Good choice. Eleven. Nine over. That's like six card draw. You establish a link with the ghost and are immediately overwhelmed by its sense of desperation. It needs your help. Oh, didn't get anything. Well, in your trance, you come to understand the ghost's implorations. Many years ago, it was tricked into building the pipe organ by a nefarious cult known as the Order of the Divine Agony. It used the organ to collect the remnants of disembodied souls that were harvested from the dark sacrificial rituals. The cult is long gone, but the reliquary of tormented torment abides here in this house. Within the pipe organ dwells the disembodied rage of hundreds of sacrificial souls. The ghost was able to sabotage the organ many years ago, hiding important pieces in the house. He alone possesses the sheet music that the organ desires to unlock his destructive powers. The organ master wants you to help him destroy the organ and free the revenants so that they can return to the spirit world. So... We'll do this. We'll find the grip. So, it's... I don't remember what you get if you destroy him, and then get the sheet music, find the clock, and bring it back to the organ. It's the wrong choice, quote quote. The organ is actually a hostile entity, will attack you, and is difficult for you to destroy, if I recall correctly. But I forget what you get as a reward for actually destroying it, but we'll do the ghost one. If I recall correctly, it's a lot easier to do what the ghost wants than to do what the organ wants. A haunted piano. You see a magnificent grand piano in front of you. The hairs on the back of your neck begin to stand on end. You feel a presence nearby. Streams of psychokinetic energy are leaking from the piano. You can hear a wailing plea in your mind for help. Some supernatural entity possesses the piano. You brace yourself for its psychic impact. You can see the psychic wave roll towards you. You set yourself to withstand its shock. Your mind is strong. You deflect the fear that would have sought to dominate and consume you. The grand piano seethes before you. Something seems wrong here. You sense that a curse or fell sorcery has imprisoned two spirits here. One acts as jailer to the other. You can, in fact, hear the captive plead for release in your mind. You remember a lecture during your odd training about Plotinus's theory on spirit traps, some cursed items used in a spirit to effectively bind another spirit to its existing nexus with our world. Such spirit traps could snowball out of control given the chance. Perhaps you can free both before it is too late. This is part of a quest, as you can see this is difficult to do, so we're going to leave it alone. You're not confident you're ability to handle this right now. A strange gong! You see a large wooden brass gong. It looks completely out of place standing over by itself in the room. You sense immediately, though, that all is not as it seems here. You've seen enough of these things to notice the faint aura that surrounds it. You have no doubt that the gong is a sorceress puzzle of some sort. The markings are vague, but you would place it around the period of the Three Kingdoms. There is definitely dark magic at work here. The runes covering the wooden frame must contain the instructions on how to use the gong and access its abilities. Oops, we should have um, read that really quick. The thought of all that noise scares you. The fact that you have no idea what will happen if you do sound the gong scares you even more. Let's go down the chalk hallway. A clue. Plus two trick bonus and a weird symbol on it. That's weird. You discover a page torn from Durlet's journal. It dates to last week. You find the disturbed ranting of a man obsessed with the ritual of bargaining with a demonic power of some sort. It seems Durlet desperately wants something and is willing to trade. 
That's interesting. I wonder if this will play some special part at the end of the game, that weird symbol we see there. Well, not weird, it's a triangle, but still. An old grandfather clock. Your attention is drawn to a magnificent grandfather clock that dominates its section of the room. Constructed out of rich mahogany, its exterior is decorated with ornate friezes and carvings. Its large brass pendulum hangs motionless but frozen oddly at slight angle. You had your fair share of encounters with possessed or cursed furniture, and you don't sense anything supernatural here. There's something strange, however. An aura or energy of some sort is being hidden here. It is hard, though, not to be awestruck by the quality of the craftsmanship that went into building the clock. Perhaps it was meant as a distraction. Let's remove the, po the possessed organ parts, but this is trapped! If we fail to do this, we're going to take a, a hit to the face. You notice the main assembly housing contains a multitude of gears, pins, and even tubes. Many seem like they have been added haphazardly. The clock isn't even working. You should be able to follow the possessed organ's instructions and find and remove the missing parts. Nope. Not with this hand. We're not going to. You start to pull out parts and then things go from bad to worse. As you remove a pin, you hear a distinctive click and a whir of a trap triggering. The whirling sound of the trap springing into action gives you a slight head start, but in the blink of an eye, a sheet of needles is flying in your direction. You instinctively twist yourself to the side and fall to the floor, hoping to dodge the razor sharp cloud of pointy needles hurtling, nope, towards us, not with this hand. You try to evade the wind of gistling steel, but you slip and stagger. You turn your back into as best you can to minimize any damage, hoping they are not poisoned. Oh, thank God. I'm so nervous failing traps. As you've seen, get impairments very easy for them. We'll try this again. It's a little better. You have to do some digging, but you manage to retrieve the parts. The clock is still here, so it's part of another quest. We're right here. Let's... Oh, no. We have to... Tur What's next? We need to find the Ghost Workmaster who stole the person in slate. Nope. We need to install the parts and then activate the banishment ritual. Okay. Let's actually come down this way instead and explore these other rooms. A smoldering corpse. Your attention is drawn to a burnt corpse sitting in the charred but yet still comfortable leather chair. The smell of burnt human flesh is overwhelming at first. You haven't counted it before, no matter how often you've experienced it, it always initiates a slight gag reflex. You take a closer look at the body to see if you can figure out what happened. That's when the hands unclench from the armrests and beckon you closer. Your eyes wide in disbelief as the burnt corpse motions you closer. Come here, will you? It whispers in a long, drawn-out moan. Your mind is strong. You have seen things far worse than this. In fact, a few years back, you were assigned to a detail that had to clean up after an Agent Sherman mess. One crispy body doesn't even come close. The creature does not seem to be able to leave its chair, being partially melted into the back of it. You think you hear something. The burnt corpse talks in the slightest audible whisper. Its mouth barely moves. Don't smoke. You decide to muster all your courage and willpower to try and get away from this burnt creature. There is something very wrong with it. And it scares you. You take a couple steps back, and as the smell begins to fade, you already feel a lot better. Soon you're away from it, and feeling fine. We'll explore the gallery. You found a clue. Minus two target level and another weird symbol. You discover a page torn from Durlet's journal. It dates to last month. You find the disturbed rantings of a man obsessed with the, with the bring the dead back to life. <laughs> hmm. These are probably very important symbols. 
a row of talking busts. You notice a row of sculpted marble busts against a wall. You count four until you notice that one has fallen to the floor and subsequently cracked in half. A sudden chill comes over you as you watch in amazement as the faces on the busts begin to move. Lips pucker and cheeks flex as if they were warming up for something. And then they begin to sing. You hold your hands to your ears, but the ghostly singing will not cease. Some jingle about grim grinning ghosts flows on their lips, and you just wish the noise would stop. It might drive you crazy if it doesn't. Your mind is weak. Before you know it, you are singing along. This is a tune that might haunt you for some time. I get it. That's, that's pretty funny. A chorus of talking heads continues unabated, even though it has no further effect on you. The heads seem to be having too good a time to stop. You are certain that some sorceress curse has bound spirits to these busts as some form of punishment. Just who was being punished, though, is an open question. We'll try to interrupt them. You decide to use your expertise as a medium to attract the busts' attention and see if you can find out what their story is. We might have useful information, since they seem to have been sitting here for quite some time. You enter a trance and try to in and try interrupting them. You raise your voice. You ask politely. They are too caught up in your singing to even notice you. We'll try that again. Oof! That's gonna fail. Again. I'm failing on purpose. Because I want a better hand than fives and sixes. Oh, I can, I can, we can keep this up. We can fail like another two, two or three times. We, rather, we can take two or three more sandy hits. Come on, give me some face guards, game. You can do it. Darn you! You enter a trance and start singing along with them. It's painful, but by messing up the words and being dreadfully out of tune, you get their attention. Soon they are begging you to stop. That's when you take control of the conversation. The busts were once members of a family that resided here. The story is muddled and conflicting from the various heads that, but you are sure... Oh, and you are sure they are lying about what happened to some extent, but the short of it is that they were cursed by a Black Lodge sorcerer. They're unanimous in their opinion, though, that you can help them. The sorcerer also cursed a statue of a gargoyle. It resides somewhere in the house and contains a coin inside that, when used properly, can break the curse. Your attention is drawn to an old tapestry hanging on the wall that depicts a medieval battle of some sort. It looks like it should be in a museum. Examining the battle scene a little closer, you immediately notice the large red hand that divides two groups of armored knights. Suddenly, the battle seems to come to life. Knights charge the hand on both sides and are knocked to the ground. You stare at it in amazement, wondering if you are hallucinating. Your eyes wide in disbelief as the battle unfolds before you. A ghostly vapor seems to enshroud the tapestry. I couldn't have gotten this at the last challenge. This, this hand. This is a decent hand. Your mind is strong. You have seen things far worse than this. You remember that night at the that night you spent in the museum at Mystic University. If you can survive that, then this should be no problem. The tapestry is obviously animated by some type of sorcery. It might even be possessed by some malign spirit. You should proceed with caution. It isn't unheard of for something like this to function as a doorway or portal to another dimension. Once you... once in, you might not get out. Head on a stake. You think you see a disembodied head floating in the gloom. As you near it's a cl as you near its location, you realize that it is a head of a man mounted on a stake that protrudes from the floor. Dried blood stains the stake in what was once a pool on the floor. You are startled when the eyes of the head flutter open. This thing is animated by some curse or forbidden sorcery, and it almost seems to be smiling at you. You lock gazes with the head and feel chilled to the bone. You must fight to keep your sanity. Good job, Dennis. Your mind is strong. You smile back at the head on the stake. I guess if we can, like, tease or pun the thing, Dennis is okay with it. Like, seeming boo to a ghost, smiling at a, at a head on a stake. He's, he, he, can, he can handle that. 
The head on the stake is obviously animated by some evil sorcery, most likely some necromantic artifice. Such a curse would require great power and forbidden knowledge. Its gaze is locked on you when you sense an intelligence of some sort. But we cannot communicate with it. We don't have the power to do so. You will yourself to turn and run. You break your locked gaze with the head and quickly turn away. Thankfully, we stayed in the same spot. Let's just get to the other side of this. Another zombie. We've already read this one, so we'll just try our best to use magic. It's so weird. We win. Hey, we get an experience point. Excellent. That gives us plus one cups. Oh. Oh, the gun room. Gun room has a good chance to get us a gun if we succeed at the challenge. But we only get one chance. And if we fail, we won't get a gun. Normally, this is when I would uh, save the game so I could cheat and get a weapon. We could come back here later, but there's no guarantee it's going to be any eat. We need wands, I think pentacles to succeed at the challenge. Let's at least see where, where it is in here. There's also, I think, an alligator in this room. A stuffed alligator. Another clue token. Well, holy crap. Plus two draw bonus. You find Derlis' wedding ring placed on an old picture of his wife. In the gun room? <laughs> okay. I guess uh, he and his wife disagreed with things, I suppose. One of these is the alligator. It could be, well, it could be the, the huntsman ghost. Old broken gun cases. You notice several old broken gun cases. Upon closer examination, you see a scattered assortment of mostly antique weapons through the glass panes that enclose the boxes. Wow, we'll search this. I must have, I must have done this on purpose. I must have lowered that difficulty to one. <laughs> I must have done that at some point. So frustrated. That seems wrong to me. That should probably be higher than a 1. Unless the game's making this very easy for, easy for me. The hard thing about this game, everyone, is as I mentioned before, the game has some sort of auto-balancer that I can't get to in the game files. It makes the game more easy or difficult for you, depending upon how well the game thinks you're doing. Doing very poorly? Fail the challenge 10 times? Game's gonna make things easier for you. Have high stats? Uh, have a lot of sanity and life? Game makes it tougher for you to win the game. I don't like that. I wish everything had a balanced, just straight number. But alas, it is not the case. Well, we got a one. We'll attempt to get one success. Most of the weapons appear to be old and broken and, and useless to you. You decide to spend a little time rummaging around to see if there's anything salvageable. I don't like this hand. If we don't get swords or cups, we're not going to win. I'm oh, sorry, swords or pentacles. You find a few good candidates that might be salvageable. You get an automatic gun. And some bullets to go with it. Oh, it already has full bullets. Let's take a look at that weapon. Wembley, Webley? Webley Mark 6. Old Reliable. Select a non-face card in hand and bump its card value up plus 3. I completely forgot that we have a trench knife I should be using in my combats. Wow, Tim. And you all were yelling at me. I'm so sorry. So the good news is that we have a gun. So now, if I take any ranged feats, that will make this better. What does it do again? Select a non-face card in hand, and this one's a random face card in hand. Okay, we should be using this every battle we get in. This haunted stuffed crocodile! You immediately notice the enormous 12-foot stuffed crocodile displayed prominently in the room, which is adorned with many other eccentric collector's pieces. A sudden chill shoots down your spine as the tail of the crocodile begins to sweep back and forth. The eyelids flick open and you know something is terribly wrong. 
You can't be sure whether this thing is alive, undead, or animated by some dark sorcery, but it certainly looks hungry. Your mind is strong. You've seen things far worse than this. The crocodile turns to face you, and you can clearly see the stitches that indicate that this creature was stuffed and then reanimated, probably as a guardian for this place. Its gaze is locked on you, and it slowly starts to advance towards your location. We have the best chance to flee it, honestly. Wow, we have a decent chance to run. Difficulty is 10, really. That is makes this really tough if I want to fight it. We might win, but that's tough. I would like one more swords first. We'll try one combat against it. That's pretty bad. Oh, I forgot about my heroic feats. Forgot all about these. What do we have? Whirlwind? Roll one bone and bump the card value up on X random non-face cards plus X. Then draw a card. And that lowers the cards on that side. Alright, let's first start by using a trench knife twice. That gave us a seven of swords, and we'll do it again. That gave us a nine. That's that's good. I can't use the Webley on that. We could use World. No, Whirlwind can fail because our cups is only three. I think we just play the three here. Hey, we won! Take that! Take that, crocodile. And we didn't even need to use a trench knife, but it should be. I should get in the habit of using it every time. Wow! Good for us! We sliced that thing up. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm surprised we won. You have won the battle. You knocked the stuffing out of it until it can't continue any further. I think we need either the swords or a skill card. Both will be really useful. The swords might make it easier for us to do these fights, but the game's balancer might see a four and be like, Whoa, buddy! That's a four! Let's increase the difficulty of all those swords things by two points. We could also add a skill card and try to work on our pentacles. I think that's probably in our best interest. If we're lucky, we'll get another zombie fight. Oh, the spray of darts! You feel your foot step down on the pressure plate and then hear the pneumatic sounds of darts being shot through blow tubes. You catch a glimpse of the deadly swarm of needle tip killers heading your way. We have an equal chance to do either of these. Oh, without. We react without thinking, tucking to an acrobatic duck and roll. Oh, it's gonna be tricky. We have high number cards, which are good. We have a 10, two sixes, and a 7 left after we played our 8. Oh, thank God. Alright, we avoid the trap. And we actually come up with a few pressure points. You tumble away from this curtain of darts and emerge unscathed. Yes! Oh, yes! Luck plus one. We really needed that. One second. I'm, I'm going back to the main menu. We're going back to the main menu for that. Traps and locked doors are so important to do well in in the beginning portions of the game. They're one of the few things that give you that aura of luck. Woo! And one more experience point. We'll take another point in our skill card attempt. Come on, zombies. Darn it. All right, we want to go to the pipe organ and put the parts in it. We're going to do this now because I would like to complete this quest. It'll give us more experience points. Okay. This is most definitely the pipe organ, which the ghost of the organ master wanted you to destroy. Armed with his incantation, you should be able to dispel it and sever its nexus with the organ. We're going to need a page to be victor uh, uh, cups to win this, though. Yeah, we'll just do this. I don't know what happens if you lose, and I'm not, I wasn't willing to take the risk and fail it. Reciting the melody that the ghost taught you, you taught you, taught you, you drive the evil spirit from the pipe organ. It seems to shudder and then exhale in discordant death rattle as the air wheezes one final time through the pipes. Yes! Plus one XP. 
experience point. I think the reward for this is a guaranteed one experience point as well, which is enough to take a skill card. We'll turn this in, everyone, and then we'll call the session. Feels like we've been playing close to an hour. Time is running out! You sense that if you don't hurry it up and find your friend soon, it might be too late to help him. You worry that it is already too late. The chance of a health card being generated when a combat challenge is failed is doubled while this story icon is active. Most of the time in combat when you fail the health, uh, the challenge, it's a 10 to 15% chance. So now it's a 20 to ew, 20 or higher chance. So, we will attack the imps. Oh good, and it end up my So, I lowered the fire imps to an 8. I can see now that it is a 9, so the game has added one difficulty to the challenge. All right, well, we already read this earlier, so let's go ahead and fight it. We have an easier chance now, thanks to my modding. It's not guaranteed. The imps bombard you with flaming rock of brimstone, which burn you and set your clothes on fire where they make contact. You roll on the ground to put out the flames. I'm not selecting that this early in the game. Try this again. Oh, That was terrible. Ouch. That's a much better hand. Let's let's go for the victory. Imps from what oh, you seem created piles of imp bodies. Oh, we already read this. Alright. I do I do like that they keep fighting until they all and they laugh as they're dying. That's that's amazing. Um Imps, because I had just edited their file like 30 minutes ago, they have a 10% chance, is that right? 15% chance to give you a health card or two, and a 10% chance to generate a experience token. I want to cheat, but no, let's turn this quest in. <laughs> if you... If you go to the main menu and save the game, and then come back here, you can Alt-Tab and, uh, I'm sorry, Alt-Tab. You can Alt-F for the game to kill it, or Alt-Control, Alt-Control Delete, and it won't, it only saves the game when you go back to the main menu. But no, we're gonna, we're gonna do it. You destroyed the pipe organ as the ghost required. You hope that with its task complete, the Organ Master's ghost can be at peace. The Organ Master's ghost smiles and thanks you for your help. It says that it didn't really expect to see you again, but it is pleased yet you proved so resourceful. Content that its task of redemption is done, it fades away slowly before your very eyes. Oh, ghostly music. During the results phase of any successful challenge option that has the persuasion or deception type, there's a 5% chance that a nothing of interest card will be turned into a talisman. Wow. That's very nice. Oh. Well, that's still good. One second, everyone. So I am going back to the main menu. Because if I don't like what I pick, uh, I will come back. I will, I will, I will undo this. Now. What do we want? So, I want pentacles. I don't want a two pentacles for the remainder of the game. What's available to us? So, talisman expert, I think, improves pentacles. You get a sp we get one spell from everything. Talisman Edges, and a Pentacles Bone. I would like to take this. Hmm. A Talisman Edge will grant us plus one to a stat for every Talisman of a certain type that we have. We just got a Edge that gives us a 5% chance to get a Talisman as well. So I think Talisman Expert is what I want. We also can get spells, which will be useful. A Pentacles of Bone will help us cast them, and increasing Pentacles is what I wish as well. So, I'm really tempted to take this. Is there anything that improves pentacles and something else, though? Cups and wands? Swords and wands? No. Okay, then we will take Talisman Expert. You have studied under shamans, witch doctors, and even a leper king, and have scoured the world in search of protective charms and incantations. You are an expert in the art of defensive sorcery, and the creation and use of talismans. Oh, it's three points for the first pentacle up, uh, upgrade. That sucks. 
Okay, so we're going to be increasing pentacles at least once. Probably twice. Then swords. And then after that, probably bone of pentacles. And then I'll make up my mind what we're doing after that. We might go for another skill card to improve our wands and cups. We probably, honestly, should take a traps card, though. Cups is my next big thing I'm worried about. Alright, well, well, that'll do us. So let's go ahead and summarize what's happened so far. So, Dennis is looking decent. He's looking pretty decent. We have leveled twice, getting plus one cups, and we got a skill card in the first hour of the game. I consider that to be a, a good amount of progress. We've actually garnered enough experience points to make this a little easier for us and give us more potential. We have a weapon, a Web Webley Mark IV, and we also start with a trench knife. That's very, very nice. I completely didn't use a trench knife against the imps, did I? I'm good at this game. <laughs> um, what else is there? I think that's about it. Yeah, we, we've picked up this up. That's pretty good, and we've leveled. Um, we also completed our first quest, and it looks like we've explored everything down around here. We also have several quests that we picked up. We have a quest that we picked up, which is good. And we know where several other quest second paths are. Okay. So we come back, well, obviously we'll be exploring more of the house. I will see you guys then. Thank you all for watching, and take care, everyone.